Hi, my name is Kelly Hood and I'm a cybersecurity engineer at Optic Cyber Solutions. I am a registered practitioner in RP with the CMMC program. And lately we've been hearing a lot of questions about FIPS validated cryptography and what is that even mean really. So we wanted to take a few minutes today to focus on some of the questions that we're hearing and talk about that specific topic on FIPS validated cryptography. How do I figure out what products are validated and what does validation even mean? So a lot of the questions that we're getting are really stemming from the same practice in a lot of cases. And in most cases, it's coming from SC.3.177 from the system and communications protection domain. Um, so here we can see the practice states that we must employ FIPS validated cryptography when using or when used to protect the confidentiality of CUI. Seems simple enough, except what is FIPS validated crypto cryptography and what does that mean? Um, so really what we want to highlight in the picture here is that we want to make sure that when we've got CUI, we've got our report, we want to pass it through a crypto module that has you know, a trusted uh, uh, encryption algorithm and that has been implemented into that module appropriately. And that when we get to the other side, when it's been encrypted, that it actually has been encrypted and that it's it's not, we haven't gone around those protections or it hasn't you know used the algorithm incorrectly or anything like that. So basically we're looking for validation that the crypto cryptography is has been implemented correctly so that we know that we've got encrypted data on the other side. And um, just another note here for SC 3.177, this is required for any CMMC level three organization. So anybody trying to reach level three will have to ha will be concerned with this practice. So here I wanted to highlight really the problem we're trying to avoid. I think we've all seen pictures like this at this point where we're bypassing security features. Here in this picture, we're looking at a road that has a gate on it, which sounds great. We're gonna keep people in or out as appropriate. But the problem is we can also see there's a lot of lines going through the grass where people are just you know driving their cars around the gate because there's no fence or anything else and making sure they're actually going through the gate. So here, that's really what we're trying to achieve. We want to make sure people aren't bypassing the security that we're putting in place, but that we're actually using it to make sure that the protections are serving the purpose as appropriate. So bringing it back to our an encryption requirements, we really want to make sure that as we are encrypting our CUI data, uh, that it's going through the module as appropriate, that it's not driving around the gate, that we don't have a product that, you know, that may have some sort of encryption included, but that we're just, you know, going around it and not using that. We want to make sure that when we encrypt the data, uh, or that when we think we're encrypting the data, that it's actually coming out on the other side as ciphertext and not just as plain text on the other side. So another point we wanted to clarify is that there's a lot of misleading language in industry right now. Um, the practice we can see requires FIPS validated cryptography. There's also terms we hear thrown around like FIPS compliant or maybe FIPS approved or different things like that. But, but validated, really what that is saying is that the product has undergone and passed you know, conformance testing at a national laboratory. That there is somebody that has gone through, they have run tests using different equipment to make sure that the encryption is being used appropriately, that, that whole module, not just the algorithm, that the module itself has been implemented appropriately, and that's been done through the CMVP program at NIST. Um, FIPS compliant may mean that components of the product have re received the validation, but that the whole product itself may not have. So you may have, uh, you may still have some assurance, but it's not the same level. We want to make sure that the whole product, not just a piece of it, has had that validation. So how do we find out what's been validated? So we've got some links here um, to be able to check the NIST website to see what has actually been validated to date, knowing that the process can be slow, um, but there are also a lot of things that have already been validated. So we'll have the link that I'm showing here down in the, the notes um, on the video as well. So if you want to check down there, we'll have the notes for the validated modules as well as the validations in progress. So there's a lot of great information we can find on, you know, what, what has actually been validated or if you're working with a vendor that says, we're in the process, guys, I promise it's coming. Um, there's a lot of different levels that you can see here with its, you know, review pending, in review, coordination, finalization. So there's a lot of steps in the process, but using these links here, you could go and actually find on the NIST website exactly what products have been validated and what may be pending at this point. 
And I wanted to show here that when you follow that first link to go see what has been validated, you'll get to a page that looks a lot like this. And you'll see that in the kind of the bottom section of the screenshot here, um, we can search based on certificate number, vendor number, or vendor name, or module name. So if you know that you're looking for a Microsoft product, then you can put that in the vendor row. If you've got a, you know, a specific module name, you can put that in. If your vendor actually gave you an, a certification number, even better, put that in. And then you just use that search feature to go find out the data about what actually was tested and, and where all it was tested or what other products it was maybe tested with or what version was tested. And you can get all the details there. If you're not really sure what you're looking for, if you don't have a specific product in mind at this point, but you know you need something, there is a show all button as well there that we can see on the right hand side. Um, it may be a little bit overwhelming, but it, it does provide you that full list of everything that's been validated. So it might be another option to take a look if you're still open to options on, on looking through what has been validated previously. So I wanted to wrap up by just providing a few additional resources that you may find helpful. Once again, we'll have all of these links as well as the links to the NIST website in the, in the um, description below this video. Please feel free to reach out if you have any other questions. I know this was a, a high level overview, but we wanted to help kind of answer some of those initial questions that we're hearing a lot from our customers and from industry about, you know, what am I looking for? What does FIPS validated mean? Where do I even start with that? So we're hoping that this will help you get started, but please let us know what other questions you have. If you want more details on how to dig into finding those FIPS validated products um, or any other questions around CMMC. Once again, my name is Kelly Hood and I look forward to hearing from all of you. Thank you.